got Thomas coming. I've had some amazing conversations with Thomas over the last few days. I mean, it's just been some of the stuff I've learned, Jim, about Hugh and about Cicada and the connections and th- I just, it's going to, I think it's going to blow everybody's mind if, if he opens up and he's honest about, you know, what's going on here. And I have no reason to believe he'll be uh, dishonest at all. So uh, I, I've learned to kind of trust this guy to some degree. I know there's people who don't. And they'll probably say, oh, you're foolish for trusting him because he is controversial. Um, but there's just too many connections that I don't know how to explain to people. That's like he sees things a certain way that I kind of see things. And we meet kind of like how you and I are, how we have this like unspoken bond that just sort of like resonates with each other. And uh, it's cool to have that kind of a connection with people. So please forgive me. I'm not I, I love this guy. Please forgive me if, if I, I'm, I'm going to try and be really uh, uh, fair and true. So I know he's got some people who have aught with him. And uh, I'm going to try to... What is up with that? Are people collecting authors? Is people, it like... people don't always like truth tellers. And people don't always like people who are esoterically minded. Um, most people are kind of built on the, the physical things that we're going through and an esoteric mind thinks on a higher consciousness level. So you're thinking it like, uh, it's like often I have, I don't, I'm a speaker, but I sometimes have trouble forming my words that I want to say to convey exactly what I'm trying to feel. And like, I used to make a whole bunch of videos that tried to take my visions and put them on to, to a uh, visual and music and, and try to, entertain as well as enlighten people through my visions of what I was seeing. And so some, I used to make years ago, a lot of visionary kind of videos. And I've noticed, you know, Thomas, same way, does the same thing. So. so in his number. He, he doesn't mind. You can, you can show it. Here we go. Here we go. He said, you can show it. He does. He's not afraid. He can, he can choose to pick up the call or not. Hey, Thomas, you there, buddy. I am indeed. <laughs> Thomas is with us. We got Thomas and Jared. First of all, let me introduce you, Jim, to Thomas. A lot of people think you guys are already colluding together. First of all, let's make this clear. Are, have you guys ever met before? Never. Oh, you know, we, we were roommates, but for less than nine years. <laughs> we were roommates in Harvard. But then we, Was that the FBI facility, the CIA, or the NSA facility? Uh, you know what? We used to ferret between Langley and Alexandria, so it's a long time ago. Oh. We have ferreting in common. <laughs> Jim, nice to meet you. Hey, <laughs> I think we're all going to get along fine. Um, it, we just need to work through some things. We're going to have a lot of questions today people have been sending me questions and i have been buried in research over the last few days dealing with all this and i meanwhile i had my butt explored so i believe me this has been a very strange few days plus we got the election and that's sort of going oddly because everybody expected a red wave or a blue wave and right now we have sort of a crashing wave and uh, yeah we we still gotta work all that out yeah you know the veneer is cracking on the nation and so uh there couldn't be a better time for this interview. Seriously. Oh, you know, and I'm so yeah. happy for all the hype that everybody, even the haters and the, the people who have odd against you have been contacting me. And, you know, I'm, I don't hate these people. I want to make something very clear. Nothing here is to be a hater. I am not a hater. I am not on some side. I'm not trying. I don't have an agenda. Uh, I'm here to be a peacemaker predominantly and to really care about all of you. So some of you, you know, I would probably get a, who, who don't even like Thomas or m- maybe don't even like Jim would probably get along with me because I'm that kind of a guy, you know, and they'd probably get along with Jim and Thomas if they knew these people. And some of them, of course, are going to have their own uh, situations or whatever. There's drama. drama. And while we got so a bunch today of we're going to share this link out because... We're only doing it on Torah3.com. Before we start, let's everybody, yes. there's 50 people here right now. You 50 people, each of you share. And then, because we're not going to put this on YouTube or, or it's just, just going to get deleted. Maybe we'll, someone will upload it there, but who knows? It, I, don't, I don't think they'll keep it. Because Thomas no, hey. 
And I give permission. I mean, I think you're okay, Jim. If somebody wants to rip a copy of this later and put it on some other resource, if they want to take that risk, I have no problem with that. Anybody wants to share pieces of it or discuss it or uh, pick it apart, whatever. I mean, what, what we're doing here today is a, is a fact-finding mission. It's an exploration into uh, some interesting topics that I think a lot of people really do have some deep questions about, such as, you know, who is involved in Q? Uh, what, what is the connection between Q and Cicada? Uh, what's going on with this guy, Gabe Hoffman, or how is I want to know what your connection to Courtney is. Who, me? With yeah. Okay, Jim, Courtney Love, so the, the, the Courtney, no, Courtney Love. Yeah. Go ahead, Thomas. Uh, okay, uh, I believe you're referring to Courtney Dobbs, who yes. uh, I was involved with the Goldwater. Well, uh, back in late August and early September 2017, she was in a chat room with a fellow named uh, Charlie. Uh, there were other people uh, in the chat room, and she was asking uh, questions about Cicada, but she was more of a observer and taking notes. Um, that's what I felt. And I also believe that uh, Tracy okay, so Beans was in the room. Reporting then. Yeah. As a reporter yeah. then, because... Courtney had been a reporter for the the Goldwater there. Indeed, indeed, and I know that she was part of the uh, uh, extraction or uh, <laughs> or mass firing. I think that was. It what didn't. It didn't turn was. out well in the end, but for a while, the, for a while, she was competent. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I understand that, and there's been a lot of. Um, uh, shifting uh, in the media world. There's been a consolidation over the last 20 years, as we all know. And uh, the news really is a barrage of 24 seven opinion these days. It's been polarized and politicized. So, yeah. So you're the, you are the, person that invented the cicada game? Um, I don't know if you Puzzle. could say that. I, I would actually, uh, you know. You're the one who solved it. <laughs> no, no, it's deeper than that. <laughs> no. it's, it's deeper than that, Jim. This gets a little complex. Yeah, all I can say is uh, uh, there was a puzzle that was created by various people. And, uh, you know, I, I play a humble role in it all. But, you know, we're, uh, we're, how can we put it? We are uh, part of the leading proponents of the world for privacy rights, for the restoration of privacy. And uh, as far as where I fit in, you know, I, I don't talk about it. That's the whole idea. It's kind of like the fight club. <laughs> so, I like um, privacy. Privacy is important. It's, like, it's very important very important it's critical it's critical to productivity to intimacy among humans uh people forget that we need shade we need shade as a species otherwise um we're in the desert and and uh, you know we literally become cacti we are um uh, either going to nurture our tendrils and our roots or we're going to become prickly and exposed and, uh, we'll become well, can, can I break in for just a moment? Because I want to I want to give kind of an introduction of who Thomas is, because some people who are watching. Yeah, may not, you know. uh, Thomas, this is this is from his I'm going to read his uh, bio from his own website, which you can go to at Thomas dot com. But it says okay. that Thomas well, Schoenberger is a polymath. Thomas He's a composer a historian, an entrepreneur, an event designer, inventor, and writer. His compositions have been performed by leading musical groups, including the Moscow Chamber Orchestra and other notable artists worldwide. His historical observations are developed through an extensive travel through Europe, Middle East, and America. An unusually prolific composer, he has created thousands of original compositions from piano concertos to symphonies and operas. His first performances were as a young child, and his father was a classically trained composer before becoming a male doctor. 
website, which you can go to at Thomas Schoenberger. Thomas Schoenberger.com. And this kind of yeah. gives you the general, I mean, you can go on and read that for yourself because I don't want to read the whole thing, but Thomas has done a lot and he's been involved in a lot of different uh, uh, types of businesses and uh, creative opportunities, one might call it. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually very pleased that he and I have gotten together because at one time, as he knows, I, he was kind of, when I first started studying about the death of Isaac Cathy, his name got brought up a lot. And uh, that kind of led me to do a little bit more study on him. Uh, I've always been kind of a watcher in the background of things. This is why, you know, I was following Q for a long time before I ever came out publicly. I was uh, watching a lot of this drama that's been going on, on the internet without even saying or commenting on it, just, just being a, an observer. So this is particularly interesting to me because of uh, my past of looking at all of these uh issues re surrounding Thomas, surrounding you, Jim. I mean, there's a lot of drama out there. You both have been uh, pegged by the media in one way or another as being a part of Q in some way. So let me ask you first the first question a lot of people are going to ask. Jim, uh, Jim, let's start with you. Are you Q? No, I'm not. And, and you speak of it as drama, and literally it feels like a drama, like in as like a soap opera or something that someone has started like a drama. It's like, it's like fictional. I'm not, I'm not who people are making me out to be. That's just somebody's fiction that they keep writing over and over and over again. They get a bestseller fiction book with my name in it. <laughs> and that's all. Well, I'm, you're famous, I'm, Jim. Let's just go to, now let's go to Thomas for a second. Thomas, with, with all honesty, are you Q? No, emphatically no. Okay, well, there you go. There's a little show. Bye, guys. It was a great day. No, no, we'll get we'll get to more. <laughs> but seriously, folks, this is the thing. A lot of people have pegged them as being Q. Now, that doesn't mean that they're that both of them are not actively involved in some part of the Q phenomenon. And what I mean by that is, for example, we all know that 8 Kuhn, what was 8 Chan, was where Q first posted, correct? Yes. Okay. I thought it was and we, we also know that Q has similarities to Cicada. There, it, it is puzzle-like, much in the same way. It drew the same kind of internet interest that Cicada 3301 did. Am I correct? James? Yeah. Well, I believe I believe that uh, from what I've researched, Q started on 4chan and then migrated to 8chan uh, oh. in January 2018. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably yeah, more yeah, correct. Yeah. Actually, I, I was watching it from the side back in the early days, so I didn't really start to hit the chans until probably the first year in. I was listening to pundits a lot. I was listening to. Uh, stroppy me and i was listening to ipod and i was listening to uh, a lot of the the early on uh, uh, Seder and uh, i'm trying to think of all the different names of people who really got into the early q movement that that i started to appreciate and some and praying medic for example a lot of these people had their opinions now realize i i already was realizing they're not q but all of us play an active role those of us who spread this message are in a sense a part of it because we engage with it, we engage in it. But where did where did the Thomas do, do you feel do you feel that Q uh, came out of the cicada and how how did it do that or what what, what do you feel is the uh, because we know that there seems to be some similarity between it. So what do you think that cicada was a model? I think that cicada teaches uh, interior renaissance. I think that it's uh, not a revolution. I think that you can look at Q not as drama, but you have to look into history and see these movements that have developed, whether they're the Reformation or whether they're the Peasants' Revolt, or whether, uh, let's take, for example, the Revolutionary War. You had the flag bearer and the drummer and the officers, and they were high priority targets. You remove them. You know what? And, you hit the point. Uh, I didn't mean that that the whole thing was fictional as in a drama. I meant my part in this is fictional. Sure. 
we're we're all going and to it'll be in history for sure but i'm not yeah. i'm i'm not the guy posting with the trip code exactly but take a look at the Q movement it at one point hit 30 million and most of them were evangelical christians it's now considered to be 250 million around the world once again let's go back to something that we can all relate to the revolutionary war and you've got the flag bearer the fife and drummer and the officers these are high priority targets if you remove them uh and the cohesion of the attack could be easily broken the officers are there to provide uh orders and leadership the drummer has communications the flag bearer a rallying point and focus of the attack. And what we're seeing is a mutation of uh, late uh, 18th uh, century battle onto a cyber field of battle. So sharpen your battle axes, your pikes, and your broadswords. Uh, broad, broad swords. This is what's happening. Uh, it, it is, um, you speak of peace, James, and I understand that. But what's happening right now is there is an internal war, and I believe that uh, tens of millions of Americans are watching the fraud that has just occurred uh, at the ballot box. And there is going to be a lot of investigations. Uh, <laughs> it, it is uh, shocking to, to all of us, and we're frightened that we're going to go the way of 1917 Russia or uh, Mao Zedong's uh, China, you know, this is uh, what Stalin said is your vote doesn't matter. Who counts your vote? <laughs> that's the person who matters. Yeah, so, that's, that's true. true. You're, you're that's absolutely true. on, you're on target. You yeah, are Thomas, and, on and target. I think if, 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 uh, if you me, but prepare there for was, uh, a puzzle piece, right? In in one of the cicada puzzles called, called Q, MP3 or Q.Wave. And I think a lot of people took that and, and just kind of ran with it and said, oh, this has got to be proof that there's a connection. But it, uh, from what I understand, it's it's a very it was a smaller puzzle piece. And I, I don't really think there was a direct connection there. Can you talk about that at all? That is a curiosity because you brought up a name to me. I don't br I won't bring it up, uh, Thomas, but you did bring up a, a go between. Because in a bit here, we're going to talk about General Flynn. We're going to talk about uh, Bajan Kian. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced his name right, but these sure, are people. Bichon. Do you know him? <laughs> uh, is yes. it true that you know Bijan? Yes. Okay. It is true. And he, he was General Flynn's partner, was he not, in his business? He was indeed. And he was uh, the president of the Import Export Bank in California. And then he became uh, part of the uh, Pentagon mechanism. So you see right there, we do see there is a Thomas uh, connection, I guess, in a way, because we've got somebody who Tom, uh, we're all six degrees connected. So that's not necessarily any proof of anything. But do you believe that uh, Bijan had anything to do with uh, this? No, I don't. No. I, okay. Um, I, I do believe that uh, General Flynn would be uh, the primary suspect. Q. Yeah, that's that's where um, I'm going. I think most people by now have kind of figured out that Flynn is uh, is actively involved. I mean, his whole family took the oath. Remember, we were all taking the oath, and uh, I did. I mean, I hope most of you did. It was I, I thought it was a wonderful. Enoch went out and reposted. Yeah, he, he got criticized for it because he was reposting everybody's oath. But I thought that was pretty awesome of him to do that. Yeah, so I, I'm if, a if it's, if it's, if it's General Mike Flynn, then likely it's not a lark, then because people are still calling exactly. Like, you know, it might you know be what I side. called it? it I came be, up with a term. I, I think it's the it's gamification of politics. The gamification of politics. It's turning. It be, because notice how it all drew us in. It was like a game. It made it fun to learn about politics. Whereas most of us, we hear politics, we go, ah, I don't even want to have anything to do with it. We just vote and we move on. But now we're in such a crucial period in this time in history that we needed a guide in a sense or a news source we could trust when all the other news, all the MSM is pretty much gone. We, yeah. we really don't have any resources for truth coming through the television anymore.
They're all owned by the same six companies that are all tied together through, yeah. well, the cabal. Really take, a look at, um, take a look at the actions of Rupert Murtaugh's uh, sons, and that uh, directly correlates to uh, what they did with Arizona last night. And the problem is we're a nation. I think it was Arizona last night. Please, we're not on any of those networks now. You can say whatever. We we this yeah. network allows us to talk openly. So everybody, we're just going to be totally um, upfront and honest. We're going to share honestly. We're not on YouTube. Okay, so let's talk about gaslighting words, for instance. Uh, they stalked General Flynn's family. They made more than derogatory remarks about his uh, his nuclear family. That's reprehensible. And so these are the same people who will point fingers at you and say. Uh, stalker, stalker, you know, I've been accused of murder and rape, uh, of not being able to play an instrument, of not even being a musician. And let's look really closely at the word stalker, all right? What do you call the behavior of detectives, bird watchers, social media platform followers, archaeologists, hunters, celebrity groupers? They can all be categorized as stalkers. Uh, 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 anthropologists. Um, labeled, labeled the Paleolithic era as an era of uh, human hunter gatherers. Should we redefine that as stalker gatherers? <laughs> and let's discuss war. Right? Is science. War, it's not, war it's is not organized stalking. Yeah. So we get gaslit by these words that are repeated and repeated again and put into media, and it's a process of demonization. Um, the way the governments operate, they're run by the alphabets, and they oppress through division. That is their game. They want polarized opposites uh, so they can continue to fix elections and make you think that you're free, make you think that your vote matters. You know, it's I all found anthropologists, geologists, and archaeologists hang out together. Have you ever noticed that? Absolutely. And who funds science? Governments. <laughs> They're all three of our sciences. It's not like, hi, oh, I'm a sociologist. And it's not the same thing as being an anthropologist. It, yeah, this is true. But think of it this way, gentlemen. Uh, the FBI has labeled Q as a terrorist organization. They have now fixed. That was the just the Arizona uh, office, I believe. In yeah, the Arizona Arizona yeah. field office. Yeah. Supposedly. So, yeah, so you've got looters on the street while, uh, you know, Pelosi is talking about defunding the police. So they point at Q and they say, look at this violent far right uh, conspiracy and look, look how dangerous they are. I don't see any acts of violence. They had the Hoover Dam guy. They caught him before he did anything. They had the kidnap of a family, no harm to them. Meanwhile, we've had dozens and dozens of deaths due to Antifa BLM uh, riots, and that includes police officers dying. And then you've had roughly $3.5 billion in damage. And the economic impact of these financial shutdowns, it's killing small business. So my fear is That's we are intent. becoming yeah, it's a nation of cultural Marxism, and that is the way of uh, what Russia was in the teens and 20s and during the Stalin years, and uh, that's how China is now. And by the way, China is where Israel is selling their most cutting-edge tech. It's not America anymore. So uh, we're um, in very dangerous waters. We're, I don't think we're going to have a revolution. I think we're going to have uh, multiple poly-revolutions. Uh, and you're going to see that coming. Imagine that we have had our inner cities burned and looted and nothing has really happened. But if the QAnon people decide we're furious with how the, the vote was fixed, they can be arrested because they've already been predetermined to be a domestic terrorism group. That is the, the, the danger in speaking out against what's going on. If you gather and you organize and you have a Q sign, um, you know, you can end up in prison indefinitely. 
Come get so, me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. And I've never been a Q person, but to me, the writing is on the wall. And the only thing that is going to uh, matter is not just December 14th, but what Trump does uh, to uh, confront this head on. You know, it's, what is, uh, what is December 14th? December 14th is when they count the, um, the, the electoral college votes. So we've got the populist vote in right now, but December 14th will be the final determination. And uh, when the electoral you know, right, college meets. Yeah. <laughs> right now we're in a boat that is not oarless, but what's happening is, is sailors are picking up the oars and beating each other. Uh, and meanwhile, there are unseen hands saying, you know, let's play Truman Show. Let's rock the ocean. And so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty messed up. We got, we got a lot to talk about here today, gentlemen. I, I know that this is interesting too. And we've got so much, I've got so many questions from people. People are still putting in questions. In fact, uh, I put out a, a post a few minutes ago and said any last minute questions and I've already got, you know, a few there too. So what we want to hit this, this show may, Jim, I hope you got a little bit of time because this may go beyond. I, have to, I want to talk to Jay Red and, and Thomas, you are fascinating, man. Oh, Sorry yeah, you I knew you guys would love each other. Bro. Wow. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to connect because he connects with me. Both of you guys connect with me in ways that are way beyond anything I can even explain. In, in... We're going to deep dive down the rabbit hole. Exactly. Oh, let's, let's move, I let's move a little further. Talking. We're going to go a long time. So. Yes. Okay. Let's move, let's move to, to a, a question here because we, we have a lawsuit right now against uh, Thomas from a guy by the name of Gabe Hoffman. And, I, don't uh, I'm not, I don't want to make this too much about like people, but, but let's, let's approach some of these things. Now, I have already seen some evidence that Gabe Hoffman kind of Hoffman, attacked. They're fine people. Yeah, Gabe but, Hoffman made a movie that every, everybody's, he's a, he's a film guy. He's made a lot of money uh, doing film. And uh, he made this movie. What, what's the name of it? It's a, uh, an Open Secret. An Open Secret, which is about Hollywood pedophilia. And now, all of a sudden, as I saw it, now, maybe I didn't get a lot of the backstory, so I'm trying to still get all this, you know, I'm still working through some of this stuff, too. It's quite complex. But it appears to me, from the evidence I've seen, that Gabe Hoffman just kind of came out of the blue and attacked you. What what happened yeah. there? What uh, Gabe seems to be, by the way, I'm, I'm going to name a couple other names just because we're going to put them out there. And I don't want to talk too much about these guys because, frankly, I have nothing. I'm not going to sit here and be against people. I just want to get stuff on the table, but there's these guys named Lestat and Defango, and he they yeah. seem to be linked up with Gabe. So my question is, why, if he's the one who attacked you, and then these guys are coming against you, why are they suing you for defamation? Yeah, well, essentially, Gabe is pretty litigious. Uh, Gabe appears to be suing anybody who starts to question Isaac Cappy's death and lack of uh, investigation into his death. So I didn't know Gabe from Adam when on May 27, 2018, he attacked me. This was a fortnight after Isaac died. Uh, it was uh, roughly around the same period, uh, right after Isaac died, that I got a death threat from uh, Ella High Priest. That's the instigate guy uh, out of what uh, priest down from on. a priest? El Elohai, Ooh, Elohai priest. He's a diamond merchant, isn't he? Doesn't he sell diamonds or well, something? His, oh, his I'm sorry. Are. I thought you said a priest. Era high priest. El Elie, priest. It's Elia. Yeah. El yeah, I can't even say his, it. I don't, I don't trust the guy. I watched his videos and I, I have to say that I, my general feeling was I just don't trust this guy. And I don't trust <laughs> Gabe Hoffman. Why is it? Since yeah. yeah. Well, Isaac, well, Isaac actually was friends with 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 Priest, but well, he... yeah. yeah, but Isaac and went he's to not a priest. Yeah. It's just a last name, like Michael Prince yeah. is not a prince, but he, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay. His real name is his given name was Peter Priest. But at any rate, going back to the story, uh, Isaac uh, jumps off a bridge on the 13th of May, 2018, 
the bridge uh, jump is, it, it's not a suicide bridge. It's, uh, it was 22 feet to pavement. Looked like he was trying yeah. to escape an abduction. And he had said previously he was not suicidal. Um, and he had also said he had a huge file on Gabe Hoffman. Gabe Hoffman is not just a film producer. He runs a Cipeter Capital. A Cipeter, by definition, is a bird of prey. And so what Gabe said is that, uh, or what uh, Isaac said about Gabe on film, is that he suspects Gabe of being very shady, uh, that he's in with dirty people. I didn't know this. I talked to Gabe maybe 12 times in his lifetime. I had, uh, you know, had a conversation or two with him in July and then several in August of 2018. But all of a sudden, on May 27th, uh, 2018, and Gabe is just a couple weeks, or uh, Isaac's a couple weeks dead, this Gabe Hoffman character, who I did not know, starts accusing me. Now, Gabe was a known adversary of Isaac. Gabe Hoffman yes. actively sought to silence Isaac. What was he scared of? And uh, Gabe's played every game in the book. He's had my YouTube channel shut down, my Vimeo shut down. Uh, he's accused me of being uh, a Twitter account called Rachel and then accuses me of anti-Semitism. And, uh, you know, even this uh, Chavez character, Defango, uh, made a video that I captured where he says Gabe was trying to recruit me. So if you take a look at the collusionary behaviors of Arturo Tafioski, that's Lestat, um, Defango, a lady named Kelly Giannini, uh, who's sketchy herself. Her husband spent years and years in prison for kidnapping and uh, then armed robbery. And then Brett Trimble, who was a CID, he was a uh, criminal investigative officer for the Army. These people are in cahoots. And so why would uh, a Hollywood actor who is uh, seeking limelight for his adult, his adult years, why would he dive off a bridge in Bellevue, Arizona, of all places? Um, it, it looked like he was trying to escape something. And, um, you know, the more that people question Isaac Caffey uh, and his death, the more it leads to Gabe Hoffman. So I would say that the Q community is now starting to focus very closely on Gabe Hoffman on his hedge fund, a sip of the capital, and in particular on some of the offshore funds that uh, gave services in the Cayman Islands. Mm -hmm. So that's why everybody's got an Gabe island. Is, uh, Gabe is a stockbroker in the Caribbean. He has a hedge fund which has both domestic and offshore accounts. So he had a. He's out of Florida, account. isn't he? Isn't he out of Florida? <laughs> he, He's well, not only people. I've been to the Cayman yeah. Islands. It's not much there, but it's it's mostly. Let me give you the bomb. Here, let me give you the bombshell, guys. Uh, we can connect Gabe Hoffman to Les Wexner. Do you know who that is? No. Yes. Les Wexner was the man who funded Jeffrey Epstein. So. Les Wexner and Gabe Hoffman were both six-figure investors into the Jeb Bush pack uh, rise to right also in 2015. Florida. Yes, they knew each other. Um, I don't know how deep it goes, but what are the chances that you've got two hedge fund managers uh, living in Palm Beach and with that connection with Les Wexner? So, uh, you know, what I would urge all people who are uh, followers of Q in the sense that you do your own research, you really do need to look very closely into Gabe Hoffman and simply for achieving justice for Isaac Cappy. He didn't deserve this. Stuff up? How do you, what was that? how do you research that though? I mean, where, where can you access databases that are not like, caused by, by evil employees at Google 
You know, Google well, Google may not be that bad of a company, but they do have. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, I would disagree. But they do have employees there that are both good and bad, and some of their employees are beyond bad, like the ones that the, are active listening to my telephone. Yeah, and tell they, me I, not. I I look what, I look what just popped on, guys. Like, I find Google to be like like Big Brother, but your your question, how you how would you access? Well, okay, as I said, I'm not I'm not a Q guy, but I can extrapolate things pretty well. Let's say you've got forty million Q followers in the US. Of them, there are going to be FBI agents, there are going to be accountants, forensic accountants, uh, you're gonna have private detectives. So I think it's gonna be very easy for people to look into Gabe Allen Hoffman and say, is there anything there? Now, it's quite possible he's very clean. He run his life very cleanly, but that's not what Isaac Cappy said. And it's interesting because Isaac Cappy has become uh, in death. Yeah, Isaac Cappy, the guy, who, the guy who was chased off the bridge is the primary source. Now, I remember it, hearing a story and I, I heard it was it doesn't seem like where you would suicide. No, yeah, he was not it, suicidal. It, he even made that clear. Jim, I even have on, you can go on Tiger Network. Yeah. I put this video. I have two Isaac Cappy videos that I put there. I saw that. One is, one, one is his, his infamous, which was, a, a, I think, his Epstein Island edition of Brackets and Jackets. The other one is the last <laughs> video that he was known to make in which he sat down and he he called himself a Judas, and he it sounded like other people were there. I, I really seriously have had, had a lot of questions about Cappy's death. It's been something that came, kind of came out of the Q movement in a sense that it was Q-related because Isaac Cappy was Q-related, and I became fascinated with it. That's how I originally uh, got very interested in, uh, in Thomas, is that his name got popped up. So as I remember, Thomas, our first interaction was uh, about a year ago, probably, or a little more than that. And we got into a discussion about some of this stuff. And then some time passed, and now we've reconnected. In fact, actually, we're connecting better now than we ever have. But um, yeah. it, it's really fascinating to me to look at Isaac's death because it seems so... Uh, so integral to something like there's something there that if we could just find like his dead man switch and and find out what that was that's one thing that got brought up was this thing called the dead man switch he talked about it quite often now i know you've got a video called dead man switch which i think was very fascinating very esoteric it can uh, it, there's certain similarities in fact almost like you had a prophecy of this happening because that was out what how long before cappy got capped a month yeah so and and there's things in that video that if you look i mean we're, we're talking about a jester and, and cappy was a bit of a jester you know Indeed. i mean most of us are those those of us in this movement really have a jester like quality and realize jesters are important in society jesters are not sure. just clowns I'm jesters, a class clown. you're a literal clown I was a literal clown, but it, it was important. I mean, some people remember even in the movie Godspell. Remember, have you ever seen the movie Godspell or the play? Yeah. What was Jesus uh -huh. in that? What was I Jesus found. in that movie? Exactly. So yeah. my it's point good. being that clowns are not necessarily bad. Now, when we talk about them in regard to the CIA, obviously that's bad. They're like the bad clowns or the evil clowns. But when you look at clowns as a whole, we're supposed to get joy out of them. Yet in society today, a lot of people are afraid of clowns. A lot of people well, fear them we, now because of it and all that. It's sad. But the, the true clowns can be very wise men. They bring through humor and th they bring justice to things through humor. They bring truth by hit, hitting them in the head. Often the, the jester in a court could say things to the king that no other person could say. He could criticize the king. Yeah, it, it, and, and let me tell you why it sends a chill down my spine, what you're saying, because there are certain people like Jeffrey Farnsworth and Kelly Giannini, who goes by the, uh, the non-diplume uh, shark belly Kelly. These are people who are admittedly uh, part of clown sect, 
And I do not share the belief that JFK Jr. is alive, but Shark Billy Kelly did and attempted to convince Isaac Cappy of it. So once again, if you go back to these players and the prima facie player being Gabe Hoffman, who's got the resources and the anger, uh, why would a hedge fund manager with all of his fiduciary responsibility laser focus on Isaac Cappy to silence him, to get him off Twitter, to take him down in any and every way possible, to falsely accuse him of being a scammer and a drug addict. Why is he um, using the same modus operandi on me? Uh, oh, and I've got, I've got to have it. Yeah. Why, yes. why are so many people that are involved in the financial markets so interested in Q? Exactly, Jim. Exactly. And so I, my feeling is right now that there is a fraud that is being marched by uh, like a parade down America's Main Street. And the fraud is, hello, we can get away with anything. Your votes never mattered, mattered in the first place. And we're going to do this right in front of your eyes. And that's not going to be acceptable to the American people. So, um, you know, as I said, I'm not part of Q. I didn't create it. But I am urging every Q follower to go take a look at Gabe Hoffman and Isaac Cappy. Go take a look at Isaac Cappy's death uh, in conjunction with Arturo Tafioski, a.k.a. Lestat. Uh, and Manuel Chavez, a.k.a. Citizen Zone, Dank Memes, Defango, he, he has a lot of names. Uh, can, so, I, can, I put, can I put in a, a caveat here on, on behalf? Nobody here is claiming that the names that we're giving are specifically, I, I, I hope, we're not claiming anything against these people other than these are people that should be looked at because these are people who were involved in the drama of the, all of this he, that had influence over Cappy yeah. that had influence over these are people let's go look these are suspects that's it and that's not we're not yeah. saying they're guilty they might not be some of them they might be just sideline innocent but I, I don't want to I don't want this show to become a hate thing where we just say oh these people hate but there is somebody who because showed I, some hate I, came out of the woodwork and showed some hate to me and has attacked you as well and it's a guy by the name of Jim Stewartson and both Jim and oh. Lestat seem to have been primary <laughs> sources in that hit piece that ha was in heavy.com. And there are they rumors were. going around that Stewartson <laughs> sent you a death threat hours before the scheduled court date on October 8th. And then you used somebody true. named Ellen Rogers to send you a malware packet. Now you sent me Indeed. a copy of that. And, and I'm looking at it. And do you think oh, that uh, him and Antifa Stewartson broke the law? Uh, he was getting yes, an attack from this morning and he sent a death threat by Bible yep. verse. He, he yeah, put a Bible he, verse in the chat room that was uh, referring to getting killed. Yeah, this, this is, um, it, it, we, are, we are going to be, uh, we've already sent a demand letter through my attorney to heavy.com. Uh, the next person is going to be Jim Stewartson. Jim Stewartson is a wealthy guy. Um, and Jim Stewartson did indeed use different names to send me threats. Um, you know, right before the hit pieces came out, uh, the heavy.com, and I really don't consider Financial Times a hit piece, but literally on the 8th, I get a death threat from a proton mail called Thomas Sucks, and it's a, a very specific death threat, and he threatens that by... The 17th, the MSN is going to be coming out with stories. They come out with stories on the 16th. Then he tells me, go have your last supper on Mount Shasta. So I went ahead on Halloween and drove up there with a friend and waited and uh, crickets. So he was tweeting out, I'm here on the mountain. I'm waiting, which we know is a lie. Um, this man is going to pay for his crimes. I'm going to do it through the legal system. Uh, you know, he, 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 yeah, that is. Um, I think it's, look, he's involved with that. He is. Let me let me say something. I I know that um, 
you know, there's been tensions with Aubrey Cottle. Um, I do want to uh, fulfill a promise, which is, look, Aubrey is very, uh, very, very smart. He's, he's, um, you know, what he created with Anonymous uh, is now a global phenomenon. I have been treated well by Aubrey. I just wanted to make that uh, clear. And he's, you know, um, what he did with Anonymous, uh, him and Moot, um, literally gave rise to uh, the freedom of of expression of millions who didn't have that freedom before. So um, I know that there's controversy surrounding him. He's aware of it too, but he's always uh, historically treated me decently. You know, the same thing with with Hot Wheels with with Fred Brennan. He's been very nice to me and very cordial and very professional. There are behaviors by Gabe Hoffman and by Defendo, as we call him, and by Arturo uh, uh, Tafioski or Tafoya um, that had been blatantly criminal. Uh, Defendo, as I call him now, this guy sent out a Bitcoin bounty for my capture. Uh, I was not wanted by authorities. Uh, Number two, when you send out a public Bitcoin bounty, that breaks the laws of Nevada. It's called solicitation. When someone acts on that bounty and locates and then attempts to collect, that's felonious solicitation. So things are coming down the pike right now. And in America, to get justice, the sad thing is you always need an attorney. You can't go into situations pro se because uh, the system itself will eat you alive. So luckily, I have an attorney right now, and he's got a win record uh, (laughs) that rivals Ted Williams and Lou Gehrig. (laughs) So I think it's going to be very interesting what's coming down the pipe. Well, now, you you brought up Lestat, and uh, and this is interesting because in, in, you know, looking at stuff, his name came up, and, and we found out you had been there for five days in a hotel hanging out with Lestat. And that seems pretty no. strange because he's working with Stewartson, isn't it? Well, what, what ended up happening was... Okay, what ended up happening what, is I was dating... We're getting too deep here now. Now I know why <laughs> like, because you said we're going to be talking to this guy. It's all right. I, I've got my big boy pants on. I'll be with you there, Thomas. Okay, Jim. Okay. So what ended up happening was uh, in uh, May, May 15th, uh, 2018, my uh, then girlfriend urged me to go down to see him because I was suffering from pneumonia. She told me uh, he could have a curative influence on me uh, and that he had two years of med school. I found out that was a lie. When I got down to his place, the first thing he did was uh, borrow $200 from me and never pay me back. And then I spent um, uh, maybe a week at his home where he was holed up in his um, hovel in his room. And uh, it felt really weird. He would He would be talking to me and his eyes would roll up in the back of his head. So I assumed he was on heroin, which... He admitted he had had an addiction, and it looked like he was info mining me. I became very uncomfortable around this guy. He wasn't physically clean. He was unkempt. Um, he he was he was flying to rages. Uh, so I got a hotel for the rest of it, and then uh, literally on my birthday, I went back there to collect my things. And he said, "It's too bad you're so sick." Um, I could take you to a, a, a brothel and you can de someone. And here it is. I find that personally disgusting. Um, that's pedophilia. Um, I rejected it. And, you know, the guy ended up later admitting it to people. Um, is and this the guy that Hot Wheels lives with now? This is what? Is this the guy that Hot Wheels lives with now? Hot Wheels doesn't know him. Not at all. Um, or not that I know of. Arturo is a Mexican nationalist uh, living in Encinitas, and he appears to be hooked up with Jim Stewartson, 
who was hooked up to John Cipher, a former SIS level case officer for the CIA, who is now connected to General Stan Afghanistan, the Crystals Group. He's got a, a security group, and they they do everything. They, they do analytics, a uh, red team, and so it looks to me like there's um, cohesive ops that are going on, and I would assume they are paramilitary ops. Does and it involve gonna... heroin? Yeah, I think that Arturo works for cheap. He was being paid by Defango to stalk me. I've got the evidence of that. In fact, Defango even says uh, in one of the Discord drops that Lestat dropped in Fury that uh, he was looking to hire trolls. Uh, so where would Defango, who uh, was impoverished, where would he get that Bitcoin to put out the bounty on me? Where would he have the money to spend uh, to do a cohesive attack? Well, he mentions MAGA Coalition and Gabe Hoffman. So why MAGA Coalition? Here's the Q connection. Didn't Q do a drop where they pointed their finger at MAGA Coalition, which is a political pack, um, and they said, these guys are dirty. These guys are engaging in, in um you know, fundraising fraud. So here's my belief there. I don't follow Q. I don't believe that JFK is, um, uh, JFK Jr. is alive. Yeah, However, Q. I do. Oh, believe so JFK is dead. Okay. That, yeah. that is a their group of, of Q followers who believe that just letting you know. Yeah. And and but, some yeah. of them are really nice people. It's just their personal opinions on that. Take a look at a researcher like Steve Otram. He's brilliant. He's a Q supporter, and this man's research is impeccable. So you can't sit there and paint the Q movement as uh, a bunch of uh, drooling imbeciles uh, who don't have any insight into anything. It's an American movement that is you know 35 to 40 million strong and i and the question to me is where does it mutate and morph into and i believe oh, that so that's a really good we were talking about that what post this election is q but i still oh. uh, people have asked me people have said well now that, i mean i get that sometimes where people are like well it looks like trump's gonna lose so now are you still gonna believe in the plan and i always say well yes of course i'm gonna believe in the plan it's god's plan this is that's what I've always you know the plan has nothing to do. Q kind of came along as a subsidiary to the plan I already kind of knew was there, so it it yeah. melded into it. It fit into everything I had studied. It it fit. I've I've even made the joke I was Q before Q was Q, and because I was Q following was, a lot of uh, these uh, ideas and to... stories. Yeah, yeah, and and Jim, what what did you just say? I didn't hear you. Q is not God except in the Star Trek universe. <laughs> yeah, you know the uh, the American Revolution uh, only really started with five to ten percent of the population at the time. They had the um, the disadvantage of losing most of the first battles, but they had something called the ocean that um, actually helped. Uh, it, it was a deterrent to the British. And uh, it took a while for the French, but when they came, uh, they certainly were instrumental in helping us to achieve victory. Uh, my thing, my feelings on Q is that um, there is also a group called the Q Slayers, which includes Will Summer from the Daily Beast, um, Glenn Herman from MAGA Coalition, uh, uh, and others. Yeah. I've been attacked <laughs> and, personally by some of those people under false accounts and other things I find out through the grapevine who's who. And it's like, it's yeah. sad because they just want to attack it rather than rather than discuss it. Like, don't come attacking Q. Maybe Q isn't what it, you, we all want it to be or whatever. But don't attack me just because I like this movement. This is to me, a pa the most important part of my name isn't the Q, it's the Patriot. See, I want to be a patriot. I want to help this nation to be better. Q was, for me, like a good news source. 
it didn't direct or guide me to do anything. I'm I, like, they didn't say go shoot people up on a bridge or go, go hurt anybody. In fact, Q has always been about peace. And there's, there are people who take it in other directions. They try to take it into, you know, their own little drama, their own little LARP. So they, they take on extra things. Like you brought up earlier, you know, the, the JFK Jr. belief that, you know, he was still alive. And I know there's still people out there that believe this. I personally do not because Q said no. And I know the argument is, oh, well, some disinformation is necessary. And they try to point to that. But if you use that as the argument, you literally could invalidate everything Q said, and it would make it absolutely irrelevant. You're, you, that's, that's pretty logical thinking. And for me, uh, you know, with everybody pointing at me because I can speak some languages uh, or I know a little math or a little music, um, it, it, it's profoundly stupid because there's nothing to their allegations. However, uh, I, I think that the idea of Q promoting uh, do your own research, I think that's very healthy. And I think that perhaps that is why it is deemed a threat by the alphabets. And you never know, James and Jim, if there's been infiltration tactics, which include people putting out false information and false narratives. Uh, I would assume that uh, just like WikiLeaks has been infiltrated, just like uh, Anonymous was infiltrated with, you know, the PayPal 13, uh, every movement gets infiltrated by the watchmen of the oppressors. Yeah, yeah, and I think because Q is so loose and nobody knows who Q is, not only does that allow some infiltration within like the Baker community who, who make all the different threads on Acun, uh, but that's yeah. also led to you and, and Jim Watkins being attacked by proxy because nobody knows who Q is and they can't dox Q and take Q out you know, that one camp had decided that Jim must be Q, you know, and like Hot Wheels, and they just attack, attack, attack Jim. And then uh, like Villa Stat and, and Jim Stewart's and crew, they went with, well, you must be Q, and they just attack, attack. And that's, it, it's, it's actually affected the media because now all these fake news stories have come out with this very misleading information that is incorrect. And then people read that and then think, oh, wow, I just read this article that Jim Watkins might be Q. And it's, that's something that I think is just so mind blowing that it's gotten to that. It point. is. Right? Look, I'm look, still look of the at, opinion uh, that the, the head of this thing is, is somebody we don't really think about much, which is probably not Nakasone, but that he's working with uh, Flynn. Now, what, I'm curious, yep. what do you think of uh, General Flynn? Uh, General, Thomas? I think General Flynn got a raw deal. Um, Everything that I've um, researched about General Flynn shows that he's a very good man, that he's a very good man. Uh, you know, as I said, um, yes, I've known uh, Bijan Kian. Uh, Bijan spoke glowingly about him. I know, uh, Bijan spoke glowingly about him. I know two other people who, uh, you know, they they did some business in Turkey and uh, General Flynn was considered uh, to have conducted himself very honorably. Uh, I think he got a raw deal. And I think that, um, you know, this is a man uh, with an ethical core, with a moral compass, and it's horrific to see his family attacked. So, as far as uh, uh, General Flynn, uh, I would much rather have him in high command. Than Michael Aquino. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Hey, for those people who don't know who Michael Aquino is, there's an interesting character. Give us a little rundown just quick on who Michael Aquino is, because I, I think there are people listening. They hear all these names. They don't know who the hell we're talking about. But Michael is very fascinating because he was in the military. And what was his religion? It was Setian, but it had begun as uh, Satanism. He left Anton LaVey's church around 1975. And uh, started, he, he created a, not a new religion, because it was based on a Egyptian religion, where Set is, uh, you know, the, the brother of Osiris, and Set is, uh, you know, generally considered to be evil, 
but his whole religion was close to Crowleyism, which is you do whatever the spirit tells you to do, and that means the animal spirit. With that will, be the whole of the law. Yeah, and guess who was about to take over after Crowley died? Jack Parsons, who was the founder yeah, of JP JPL. Wall. <laughs> so you like anybody who tells me, <laughs> yeah, anybody who can who can say, well, the government's never engaged in alchemy. It's a lot more than the National Treasure uh, movies with Nick Cage. Uh, they have been doing this since day one, and they have engaged in experimentations and psychokinesis. Uh, telepathy, um, witchcraft, the whole nine yards. Men Who Stare at Goats, <laughs> the movie Men Who Stare at Goats, or the book. That, that's a great, well, that, that yeah, shows kind of that. Started. That was an experiment that was run for a number of years at Fort Meade, Maryland. And uh, it, it was a true experiment, but the Russians were doing the same thing. You know, I would refer, uh, once again, uh, not to uh, not to tout Steve Ultram, which I really, you know, I think he's fantastic. I he's like Steve a, a lot. Steve has been very supportive. Yeah. So thank you, Steve, if you're yeah. listening, which I'm sure you are. I appreciate you. You got to go. Thank you so much. You have to go to his website, burners.me, B-U-R-N-E-R-S dot me, which was an offshoot of the Burning Man culture. And Steve's research is incredible. He's uh, fabulous. He's wonderful. If you guys want to learn about Jeffrey Epstein, I would suggest that you go to Titus Frost, take a look at him. Uh, Big Fish has done some uh, incredible research on uh, Epstein Island. You know, uh, Titus has actually been out to where Epstein Island is. So there's a a group of researchers uh, that that literally use primary uh, uh, sources. Um, They're they're fabulous. And I support them. Bring receipts, bring some gravy, bring some, bring something that, that, yeah. to the table. With, you know, there's a lot of people out there that make like really blatant, uh, you know, allegations to things or they come up with weird theories, but they just don't provide the sauce. Exactly. He's trying to call me. <laughs> yeah. Your mom's calling. <laughs> I have no, it's not my mom. I have no, no idea that, who that is. I mean, for all I know now, it, people have my number and they're calling me to just harass me. I have no clue. And I don't know why, because I'm not into this for the reasons of like going that, to war. I am at war, but it's an, I'm a ninja. I don't I don't fight blatantly. I don't come to your face and fight you. You know, if you if, yeah. if I think something's wrong, I'm going to sneak in from behind. You'll never know I was there and I'll never brag about it. So it, that's my a, way. That was, a, that was a robo call from the Temple of Set. Oh, that's what that was. was something with Bonaventure, something. So I have no clue. Anyway. <laughs> that so, said, uh, yeah, yeah. It, I'm only joking. But what's interesting with both Titus Frost and Steve Otrum, two of the researchers that I've mentioned, um, Gabe Hoffman. Uh, seems to hate their guts as well. Uh, so uh, they're both researchers and they were looking into Isaac Cappy. So what is it about research into Isaac Cappy that is driving this particular Palm Beach hedge fund manager and film producer crazy? So um, what a lot of, yeah, what a lot of people don't understand about Q. Uh, and I've heard this from a friend of mine who's a Leo, a law enforcement officer, He said, look, there's a lot of people in the alphabets who are pro-Q, and they literally want, you know, the seventh floor of the FBI cleaned up. They literally want the CIA held accountable for uh, surveillance and, you know, civilian intrusions. And, uh, you know, this, this has to happen. The people have a lot more power than they're led to believe. Yeah, let me so let me is, ask you. Is Abby Hoffman, you know, Hoffman related to Gabe Hoffman? Uh, I'm not I sure. <laughs> that would that would make I, sense. I, I because it sounds like they could be along the same lines. You know, Abby Hoffman is a criminal. Was well, yeah, criminal. Abby Hoffman was part was part of. Uh, you know, he worked for the government, as did Jerry Rubin. These were. 
uh, agent provocateurs. Uh, you know, when when Abby Hoffman wrote Steal This Book, uh, it, it, that was to encourage theft. If you if you take a look at uh, the CIA budget, they need to create chaos uh, to receive their money. Now, in prior days, they did it uh, internationally, and they were not allowed to do things uh, within our borders. But look at MK Ultra, right? Uh, and, and anybody who looks at Epstein Island and is stupid enough to think that Israel is not involved did not receive the videotapes uh, that Netanyahu was not getting um, all this dirt on our politicians and celebrities so he can engage in extortion, then these people are stupid, all right? These people are stupid. Yeah. Go watch the Titus Frost show. He really gets into it. And look, the bottom line is Epstein was just the front guy. He got to live well. He got his billions. You want to talk about a, a, a rabbit hole <laughs> that, that probably yeah. goes all the way down to China? Here we go. There that it is. crazy. I even have an ex-girlfriend on his list of people. As a, I only was a boyfriend for two days, and I didn't know she was underage at the time because she never told me she lied. But that was uh, a, a gal, which many of you, uh, Court, Courtney Harrison was her name. But uh, her, her name now is known as Courtney Love. And I actually dated her for two days. Let me what? tell you that. <laughs> That but you, you must realize it's it's coincident likely that this is the wow. same last name. Hoffman, yeah. Abby Hoffman. I'm I'm yeah. reading Britannica.com right now about Abby Hoffman. I don't go to Wikipedia anymore. Another yeah, another thing that gets brought up too, and, and Q brought this up in a post, is and some of this may tie into some of the people that you're talking about, the MAGA coalition. Uh, they were yeah. actually called out by uh, Q at one point. I, I was curious what your I, what your knowledge or, or understanding is of, of what the MAGA coalition was about. And, and uh... I have personally been attacked by Glenn Herman, formerly of the MAGA coalition. Glenn Herman has been a frequent guest on the Defango show. You know, he's got various names for his shows. Um, you know, it used to be the Defango show. He calls it Citizen Zone, Dank Memes, so on and so forth. So the MAGA coalition to be called out by Q and then to start attacking me. And I believe it was because Chavez was telling them I'm Q. So you have to understand that prior to Cappy's death, both Cappy and I were being attacked repeatedly and Cappy even called me and said, who is this Lestat character? Why is he following me around the internet? Um, you know, Cappy never mentioned Gabe Hoffman, uh, but after who Cappy's death, Chavez? you haven't who talked who? about Chavez today. About whom? You, you just mentioned Chavez. Chavez is Defango. Manuel Chavez the third. Oh, that's Defendo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are, are some of these do so for some people the okay. dots are connecting now. We're starting to see the dots connect. I I'm, hope some I'm, people are seeing I'm researching while you're talking here. Sorry. Yeah, and, and, and no, real it's quick, okay. The the MAGA coalition, I think, was originally started by Ann Vandersteel. And that's uh, right. they brought in Seb Gorka. And, you know, it was a pretty legitimate super PAC. But then, you know, they went their different ways. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Anne went to go do Steel Truth. And, you know, she worked with Bill Mitchell from Your Voice America. So what they did was they kept the MAGA coalition going kind of after it stopped. So so the, the MAGA coalition that got called out by Q wasn't the original MAGA original. coalition, right? right? It was this yeah, kind of it was the one to add a point over. Right. And Rich Jean McQueen. Yeah, exactly. And that one... Um, you know, at one point, they were, uh, a mega coalition was saying they're going to sue Q in, you know, 10 or 15 different states. What happened to that? What we do know, and this is going to surprise you guys, is that Glenn Herman knows Gabe Hoffman. Glenn Herman, uh, you know, I've got screenshots of those guys going back and forth. So, 
You You're sent me a lot. Of, I, I have to say thank you, by the way, for sending me all of the receipts. One thing that I really appreciated yeah. was that when you came forward with some of the information you presented to me, some of which I'm covering today and some of which I'm kind of holding out on, uh, you did bring to me receipts. So I asked people, please, when you if you're going to make allegations, especially against other people and so forth, don't just tell me. I, I don't trust words. I trust receipts. Just put yeah, that out absolutely. there. The, you know, just to let you know, I did interviews with Titus. I haven't done a uh, on-air interview with Steve Outram, but I've also, um, uh, you know, uh, had a, a debate with Big Fish uh, on Titus' show. And I can tell you that with all these guys, uh, they don't blow smoke. Uh, when they all approached me, they approached me with hard-hitting questions. It wasn't kumbaya. It wasn't, hey, you're my buddy. It was like, answer this, and I'm going to bet it three ways to Sunday. So, you know, pretty tough uh, guys. And then I take a look at the softballs that were thrown to Biden during the campaign, and I'm just thinking, the fix is in. I'd love to see people like Titus Frost and Steve Otram basically um, dismantle um, the crap that we see on TV and have their own shows. I think that would be great. I, I, think I would be more than happy to have Steve on this show. I, I, have already, I, I think Steve's an awesome dude. I, I've just I barely gotten to know him. Most of this came about as a result of the show. So some of these people have only really had complete interaction with in the last two weeks, but uh Steve has been right there being very upfront. Uh, I'm a part of a little yeah. group that, that kind of looks into right. what's going on. And Steve always brings some good sauce to the party. And I just, I would really like to talk to Steve one of these days. So Steve, you're, you're welcome on the show anytime. And we'll have you on and talk about some of those things. I do want to also bring up uh, another thing here that, that the uh, Stanley McChrystal security group, uh, tell yeah. us more about the connections of things there. What's going on with that? Because McChrystal doesn't seem like he's a real super good guy. It, exactly. Um, well, there's um, urban lore that they had uh, that they drove Michael Hastings' uh, um, car. Uh, you can make the connection to Jim Stewartson through John Cipher. This is the person I discussed earlier. The 28-year SIS level case officer, um, you know, that's CIA, and uh, he's got a bunch of spooks, uh, you know, Stan has a bunch of spooks working for him, and so uh, you can do a direct tie. Are they like, to like money on the side in addition to their government paycheck? I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. No, that, that's what pisses me off the most about that stuff, because I... There's plenty of people in the government that are corrupt, but and the, and the CIA does things that are corrupt on purpose sometimes with legitimacy for their corruption because they have to have like secret ways and they have to look evil even if they're not evil. But yeah, if they're like collecting extra money on the side for their personal benefit, I think they should be lined up and shot. It, it's yeah, it, it, it's pretty reprehensible what's gone on. The heavy.com piece was not written by a professional journalist. Uh, there were lies riddled throughout uh, the piece. And, you know, journalistically, it's um, detritus. It's, um, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, ophelines, <laughs> as they say. Uh, the bottom line is that's going to be addressed in a court of law. So I, I don't want to say too much about it except to say that the content was false. It uh, put me in harm's way. Um, if they're pointing at me as, wow, this is the founder of Q or the creator of Q, at the same time as Q is listed as a potential domestic terrorist uh, organization, then you can imagine the combination of that and having a Bitcoin bounty for my capture. You but can Thomas, imagine that. Stop, I, stop. second. You're, you're putting too much information out at one time. Stop. They're responsible for the QAnon people being condemned because they're the ones that wrote all the fake news that, that is the only news available in the search engines about the QAnon movement that, that the congressman can see. 
they're the ones Correct. that did that. They're responsible for it. Correct. Yeah, they, they like systematically deplatformed all the Q people. So all that information is gone, right? And only their false information is what's on Google. Exactly, Jim. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, guys. Exactly. And so, um, you know, what, uh, it wasn't it uh, Joseph Goebbels who said that uh, the press is the, the, the typewriter of the government? So what we're having right now is you've got a guy named uh, Jim Stewartson who is a fascist, uh, uh, in my opinion, and yet he's gaslighting, saying he's an anti-fascist. Uh, th this is a guy who wants to silence people. This is a guy who doesn't mind sending malware, making death threats. He's going to be dealt with legally. And, you know, I have an attorney who, who, who can walk a criminal complaint into a district attorney's office and say, please have your local police check it out. That's how it gets done. Do you think these people are actually dangerous? Do they, you know, we obviously, we were talking earlier about Kathy's death. Do you think these people are not, are not above actually taking physical action against people? I know they're dangerous. I know they're are, dangerous. Are they CIA connected, would you say? Um, yes. <laughs> okay, that's, that's a good answer. Do you think that they're literally trying to destroy you? Yes. Absolutely. Why? Why? Why would they? Why the 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 cicada guy? You're not following Q per se. You're I accused want, of being Q, but why would they be coming after you so hard? Because I've got something that they want. What? What? Would, what is that? What? What do they? What do you have that they want? Hmm. <laughs> well. I think I'm going to say no comment. <laughs> well, I, I think I'll bring up something else. What there's a there's a book that that people are trying to determine what it, it's it's the one place where people have just got been scratching their heads. And I was watching some stuff on it the other day. This uh, the the, the Libra Primus. Tell us about yeah. the Libra Primus. Oh, I don't know much about that other than it's twenty percent, um, you know, decoded. It's um, it, there's a lot in there, you know, um, for me, I, I figure that people need to just keep on uh, working and maybe perhaps uh, not look to Denmark or Wales for the ruins uh, embedded in the book. What's the greatest chance you could give somebody who's working on that puzzle to understand that puzzle? Because as I understand it, if they open that puzzle, there's a lot of information in there. Am I right? Indeed. Indeed. So uh, what, what's the clue that you could give these people maybe without giving away too much? Because, you know, part of this is the process of self-discovery. What would you say what? would be a clue that maybe you could give here what exclusively? I, give us an exclusive clue. What I can say is people need to look right around 1800 BC, you know, right when Babylon was young and, uh, Perhaps there was a certain language that uh, remains to most indecipherable. And let's give it the name Linear A. So there's the clue. And that's, that's about all I'm going to say about okay, that. Okay, that's fine. No, because <laughs> I know, I know, we've got to be careful. Deciphered? Are they writing in Linear A? Has it been deciphered? Well, no, there's a derivation from Linear A, which uh, is a very early Minoan writing. Uh, they've deciphered linear B, but linear A yeah, remains deciphered for sure. Yeah, linear A. Um, the archaeologists have um, perceived it wrong. They are looking at it as a noun rather than an adjective to be metaphorical. So um, that's that. So I have a question for Jim Watkins. Jim, have you received? Death threats, uh, that kind of thing, too. I received them this morning from Jim Stewartson ah. through one of his uh, through one of his aliens. Hi, Jim Stewartson. He was posting, he was posting <laughs> verses with like death in them, uh, just over yeah. and over and over again on my in my morning chat this morning. Had you had you I've heard, heard of Jim Stewartson before today or before this I time? Heard I mean, is from this him before. Uh, 
week or two ago. You know, so was that back when we first I, started talking I, I, about he, the show? He straight up came out to me like he, he's. I've had death threats from him as well. I suppose I should. I'd, uh, I'd I would be very interested in receiving those uh, too to get to my attorney. Uh, that would definitely uh, help me in moving forward. Um, you know, the, the, I gave you is, your email. I gave Jim your email, okay. so if you guys want to connect on, on that, you guys can... Well, uh, I don't have any record of the chat anymore, but but that okay. would be... If they, if they store those on Restream, it's in the Restream chat. Oh, if anybody sure. has any of this not, stuff or sees it, take screenshots, Twitch. guys. Take screenshots. Not and, and using and Periscope. Periscope. And... He was chatting through Periscope with his Twitter ID, and da, 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 da. Yeah. it was just—it was obviously one of his uh, nom de plumes because it only had like four followers, and they were yeah. like one yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> they use hit accounts. Yeah. It's sad. It's, it's like a game for them, and it's really sad. And it's like, it's I want to get along. I would like to get along with all people. I'm one of those people that wants to try and find peace wherever I can find it. I do understand that there are some people who are at war, who are evil, and they just, they will never seek peace. And, you know, integrity is important to me. So if each of these yeah. people have integrity, they can, they can choose whether they have integrity because they have to answer to God someday. All of us do. So, they do. Uh, I recommend whoever's sending threats to people or trying to harm other people. That's not the way this game is played, folks. This whatever happened to Isaac, that was wrong. Whatever is going on that's creating actual, you know, pain for other human beings, that's just not the way we play it. We're we're working with information. There's good and bad information. We can war with the information without making it personal. That's like ad hominem attacks. It's like when people go, oh, and they try to invalidate you by saying, oh, you're just a stupid ass. That doesn't yeah, do they, anything. They, you know, uh, there's an account called E the Friendly. Are you familiar with that Twitter account? He's a good friend of, the, of Jim's, I guess. He is. Yeah. He's he likes got various accounts. He's a wonderful he guy. Jim. The current one is either friendly. Oh well, you're friendly E actually. Um, that's his new. Yeah, uh, he's, the same person yeah. verified himself to me as these accounts have switched. So I yeah. won't reveal it here, Jim. But privately, I'll tell you who that is. I'll tell you privately. I don't, don't want to know. I don't want to know. Oh, you don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> no. I like yeah, the mystery. Got, I I was born in 1963. I'm a rabbit in the Chinese calendar. <laughs> but I don't deeper down the rabbit hole than I have to go. Yeah. Okay. And James it's James so is a rap, right? You're the rap, right? No, no. I'm an I'm an ox and a bull. Yeah, you're an ox. I'm okay. just full of bull. Yeah. You, you guys I'm, realize why I'm doing a daily podcast now? It's my proof of I life podcast. That's all it is. I I don't I'm not a I'm not a trained communicator. I'm just a regular guy. When yeah. it comes people to love you, Jim. Yeah, I, people yeah, love you we, because you're real. Like me. I like that too. Thank you. I like you guys too. But the reason I'm doing this is it's my proof of life podcast because I was stuck someplace I couldn't get out of for a while. I understand that. And and the thing about going back to Eda Brimley, uh, you know, he um used part of the uh March uh twenty nineteen cicada puzzle. And uh, this is a man with tremendous insights. So uh, I believe that he's serving a good cause. Uh, I believe that he gives comfort to people. I also believe that he's indicating to the world that the Q movement is now going to go into the investigation of corruption with the ballot box that we witnessed um, over the last couple of days. And I believe that is going to be a very, very healthy mechanism. Uh, I think that the American people will not put up with voter fraud. And uh, those that do, well, <laughs> are they really Americans? So, you know, there, there's yeah. a sense of outrage that the fraud is so um, overt that they no longer hide things. 
if they were going to do something Earth. dirty before, it was uh, inter terror, as the Germans say, behind closed doors. Uh, and so now they're essentially saying to the American people, you don't have the power. And guess what? That's not true. We do have the power. We do have the power. And we will. There's a lot of, of firepower out there as well in the hands of the citizenry. By the way, yeah. I went to two gun shops. I wanted to buy a revolver. You know, just something yeah. small. I could keep like a 357 or something I can keep in my bag. But they had no handguns. All sold mm. out. All sold. The yeah. only thing they had was like those. You've seen those exotic shotguns that are like red, white, and blue, and and like sure. they had just those specialty shotguns on the wall. Everything was sold out in all of the display cases. Nothing. Absolutely. And if you see a member of Q, let's say that Biden does take the POTUS office. Uh, anytime you have a group of uh, Q supporters gathering, they're going to be considered domestic terrorists. And so the alphabets are going to make their move. However, I know people in the military who are ardent Q supporters, uh, and they're also furious at what's going on, uh, what's happening with Trump. Uh, you know, I, I uh, have certain issues with Trump, but I think what's happening to him is a crime. Uh, I think it's it's a horrible thing, and I believe that the American people want a clean and free uh, uh, election cycle. I, I you we know, want justice, we, we, we and justice. honesty, and yeah. honesty and transparency. We transparency to me is the only way forward. We have it, to get it, transparent. That's why I have to remain transparent. Anybody want to know anything about me? I'll dox me. I don't care. Well, you can, I I'll send that, you a map to my I believe, house. I believe that transparency is very important for public figures and for political figures, but not for private citizens. I believe that we deserve our privacy. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm for that. No, I agree. What I'm saying is for those people who, you know, to me, I found a certain power in two things, integrity and transparency being willing to just be out there, be open, be yourself. So for me, that's yep. what works. Now, that's not true for everybody. I don't, I expect you to make your own decisions. Again, that's just me. Everybody has a choice. Everybody, that's yep. the beautiful thing in life. We have choices. It's when we don't have choices that there's a problem. And when you've got a system where the alphabets are using a combination of extortion and bribery to, uh, you know, tweak the the political system that's dangerous we need to ask a real hard question here which is i uh, you know i've got lots of friends across the pond i love the british people uh but what has mi6 done on our soil are they acting as proxies for the cia they're, act and are, they're active dude they're they are the, active the cia is not supposed to do anything in america right that with you or it, yeah, not supposed to. Or whatever. but <laughs> MI6 can, and then they can share that information. Yeah, and let's go into Israel. Uh, Q says they're uh, saving Israel for last. Well, you know what? Most of the Israeli people are beautiful people. However, when you got powerful Jewish supremacists uh, who are actively attacking America, when you see a honeypot like uh, Epstein Island, you need to ask the hard question, which is, um, you know, does Benjamin Bibi Netanyahu know about this? Did he authorize it? Why isn't Les Wexner being completely and thoroughly investigated? Why aren't they finding the uh, printers from the 1990s and early 2000s and finding the dinner list? to uh, Epstein's uh, uh, parties. Why is it that Big Fish, uh, this great researcher, has multiple manifests for Lolita Express? That was Jeffrey Epstein's uh, plane. And why haven't we heard about uh, you know, Epstein's death? Why is that covered up? Perhaps he's alive. You know, 
understand this, that in 1998, Netanyahu approached President Bill Clinton and said, we've got 30 hours of tape of you and Monica Lewinsky. So they were wiretapping the White House. And then he said, we'll make a trade. 30 hours. He said, we'll we'll make a a trade. You spring Jonathan Pollard out of jail. He was an Israeli spy. You spring him out of jail and um, we'll give you the, 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 the audio tapes. And uh, purportedly, Bill Clinton replied, okay, um, go ahead and release the tapes and we're going to uh, release uh, conversations of Ben-Gurion lying to JFK about the nuclear uh, mission for Danamora, that is the nuclear site in Israel that they said was peaceful, but which we now know is not peaceful. So there's, you know, we, we need to re- um, investigate who our friends are. Uh, and I'm not saying Israel's not a friend. I'm saying the Likud party. I think there's plenty been, of Israelis that are our friend, but the, the state of Israel, I don't know. Well, the politicians. I've, I've, I mean, got, I, I've, I, got, I've got close friends in Israel. I, you they're, know. And, they're, and they're lovely and they're brilliant and they're innovative and they're beautiful. I'm talking specifically about their government just like I talk about our government and about the British government and the French and so on and so forth. The, the bottom line is, if I call D.B. Netanyahu a criminal, which is what I do, it doesn't mean that I'm anti-Semitic. And there are people there who will um, accuse doesn't me. doesn't automatically of, say that. No, absolutely. And then you have people like Gabe Hoffman who will purposely um, point to a... Twitter account that's not mine and say, oh, here's Thomas Schumberger. Um, He's an anti-Semite. He was Isaac Cappy's handler, even though we never had a bilateral contract during the year that we knew each other, Um, even though I never met him personally, even though I wasn't in Bellevue, Arizona, or even in Arizona um, when when he died. So, you know, it's it's pretty obvious to me that things uh, are not what they seem. And, you know, everybody warned me, don't speak back to Gabe. Uh, he's going to silence you and then take you out. And I said, to hell with that. I die with my boots on. So that's why I've stepped forward. That's why I'm being sued uh, for defamation. And he doesn't um, understand what's going to come next because uh, he's not a very good chess player. Yes, I, I get it. I will. I will send you what information I have. Uh, I don't that. have much because I just just heard of these people. Believe it or not, I, I, I have a few uh, questions, guys. From, I don't know everything. I, I, I do have a few <laughs> questions from people who uh, have been sending me questions, and I wanted to throw a few of these out there too while we still have some time. And I know we we okay. have so much to discuss. We probably do a whole. Like I said when I went into this, I said I started out to just do a show, and it, it could turn into a mini series, but. Um, I'm so going to answer the, straight and simple. I like one of the long questions, long and I'll ask days. both of you is uh, your, your feelings. Let me, Jim. Some of these are directed at you, also, Jim. So let's let's go for oh. this because it's, it's interesting. I didn't yeah. do Uh-oh. it. No, do it. You, I wasn't there. You can't prove anything. <laughs> you you can answer that way. You can plead the fifth if you want. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, the first question is regarding. Uh, to, to, I'm going to go to Thomas first, and it's Thomas. What was your first meeting or uh, encounter with uh, Jack Pazowiak? I've never uh, met him. This, this guy has attacked me. I don't like him. From what I understand, that he was uh, he was a demoted, um, you know, uh, a piss carrier. He did. Uh, he carried the urine uh, for analysis uh, as a seaman. And I also understand he was on Guantanamo Bay. And we all know what happened there. So, <laughs> so I don't know, Jack. So whatsoever. Well, okay, well, that, that pretty thing. much that pretty much answers that. I'm going to move through some of these quick because there's a lot. So, just bear with me, guys. Um, Jim, are you familiar with uh, MAGA Coalition prior to this broadcast? No, I've point? never heard of it until feeling... today. First, first okay. I heard of Do MAGA you... Coalition is when you when uh, Thomas mentioned it. 
Okay, what about uh, the following? This is to you again, Jim. Uh, I, did you know about Isaac Cappy prior to this? I, I heard of his suicide, and I, okay. but I didn't realize the bridge was so short. How about, and there's two other names, and I'm, I didn't get a chance to really, and you got to understand this, these are questions from the audience, so I'm just asking them, and I'm not even familiar necessarily with these people. Maybe I am, or maybe I'm not, because sometimes I, I they go, oh, well, that's this person, and I say, oh, that person, okay. But I have There's a lot of here. names came up today I don't know. I've never heard of. Uh, Tracy I've, Twyman, I've, Tracy I've, Twyman or Jen Moore. Are those names mean anything to either of you? No. Yeah, Tracy called me, uh, you know, maybe a week and a half before she died. And she said, why are they blaming you for Isaac Cappy when it's obvious that uh, you had nothing to do with it? And Tracy uh, did confide in Steve Otram, so I would urge you to contact Steve and get him on the show. Uh, okay. He can talk about it. All right, good. Uh, what about this thing? Somebody mentioned something called VQC with a Chris Curtis. Is that okay? So that's, that's voice to skull technology. Um, I think that's what they're discussing. And the only two people who seem to uh, believe in that are, are Corey Daniel and his girlfriend, Alicia, who's a self-professed um, practicer of witchcraft. Um, there was a rumor going around that uh, Alicia put out there and she claimed she was the last person to see Isaac alive and that they were uh, under the spell of voice to skull, which is a military application. Now, mind you, it's true that um, Isaac died very close to uh, what they call Camp Navajo, which is uh, a base that was used for storage in World War II and, uh, you know, now has, you know, uh, offshoots of the National Guard and whatnot. Uh, but I do not believe that Isaac uh, was subjected to any voice-to-skull technology. Hmm. Voice-to-skull? You yeah. know, they have these hearing aids now that they, and, and they test, I didn't get them installed. I got the removable ones, but they, they put it right on your, on your, on your, on the bone and you can hear inside your head. It goes right, like right into your, it's like awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it's like, I'm not like, how do I get that one? They said, well, you don't quite. I want it for music. Can I have it for music? I'll take it for music. Cause then, then I don't have to put earbuds in. <laughs> Listen, they were using infrasound, which by definition is sound under 17 hertz, very low. It's what um, it, it, it's what lions will use on the Serengeti to uh, transfix gazelles. Uh, they were using infrasound at the um, uh, at, at the, the CIA desk in uh, Moscow, for instance, um, to depress. Uh, people inside there. And you might want to ask John yeah, Seifer. Because that's audible. He was not there. Yeah, that's I, audible. I did get a note. Let me, let me, uh, let me, I, I'm trying to hop around a little bit here because there's things being said in various chat rooms and I'm going to put this out there. I won't say who said it, but somebody just said that uh, VQC is not voice to skull. It's about RSA. Okay. RSA. So I'm sorry. I must have misheard. Okay. So uh, Jim, take it away. <laughs> uh, well, well, I don't, it's an encryption you know, I, I'm being told it's an encryption yeah, yeah it is encryption. I, I, I can generate a key <laughs> that's about it yeah I'm not yeah, I'm not, so, a, not I'm not a cryptographer yeah RSA would be uh, the alphabet to um, uh, to create an, an encryption key like, uh, um, um, well, you know, there, there's too many examples to, to even talk about, but uh, PGP, for instance, and that's been around since, you know, uh, uh, Bill Clinton's first term. So it's been around for a long, long time. There's a few questions I'm skipping over, by the way, guys, because some of it, there's a, there's a little bit of a discussion going on about things that I don't really even want to bring up with your personal relationships. Um, I don't think that's fitting for what we're talking about on the show. So I'm kind of shying away. I know we had talked a little bit about some of that, uh, but 
I think for this, for the purposes of this show, we, we will refrain from some of that. Um, let's see, here's some things that were brought up. I'm trying to, trying to go through all, now I'm going through on the, uh, the internet because some people have left me. I, I opened the door for people to ask questions and I have to kind of sort through them. Uh, some of them are kind of mean and that's okay. Oh, I, you know, I, I, mean, a, people... I did a, and, and I know one of my former employees thought it was funny, but, but I do believe seriously in these different frequencies being able to affect your brain in as little as three or four minutes even. Uh, and I'll post it in the chat room. I, it's, it, they haven't deleted it on YouTube, but I did one called Methane Lakes and it has some of the different uh, frequencies in it. Well, that's it. We can probably talk a little bit here. Let's let's move it just a little bit to your your music, because as I understand it, uh, uh, you're working on some music that incorporates some of the technology of different types of uh, waveforms and uh, so forth. And I, I find that rather fascinating, actually. So. Uh, can you can you give us a little indication of some of the stuff you're working on and how you're working on that, Thomas? And what are you doing sure. with your music? Well, you know, the common adage is that the Egyptians created music. We know that's not true. They have actually found a flute that is uh, 50,000 years old. I believe the music has been uh, in the human family for a lot longer than that. I think it probably... Uh, it became uh, literally from the screams of a child or a woman being grabbed by a predator, a wolf or a tiger or whatnot. And that music was uh, a talisman to begin with. It had spiritual qualities and that um, human beings in collective groups would uh, gain confidence and morale uh, uh, from chants, from percussion, uh, you know, the, the combination of this and fire. And if you go to, let's say, Le Croix in, uh, in, in France, you see pictures of uh, bison, for instance, um, where I um, haven't been able to prove this yet, but I think part of the painting that you're looking at uh, was made in the blood of the bison. So it becomes this um, uh, 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 magic mechanism, too. And, uh, and so, I, you know, I believe there is music in, in the caves, and it could have been a deterrent to predators, but also a, um, a, an inspiration to the cave dwellers. So uh, music right now... Uh, I believe that it can save the world, too. I really do. So I study. And, and you, you shared with us a video, by the way. I did take the liberty of downloading it with uh, your information about your website and so forth to Tiger Network. People can watch a, a video, which will be premiering. It's probably already premiered. I think I had it set for about 1.30. And uh, it was the one you sent me. So, and Thank I you. hope you'll use Tiger Network uh, there, Thomas. You come on over and uh, make it a part of what you know you're involved in, because there's a lot of really good people over here growing, and it's free. It's a site where you don't you don't have to worry about uh, you know being taken off. Well, you should get Tony the Tiger to be a brand extender. They're right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're sort of an option to YouTube has been losing a lot of people lately. It's kind of sad to watch all the YouTube people go down. We just lost on Twitter one of our dear friends, uh, uh, Ninja Stunts, who is part of the Tiger Network, and I'm sure he'll be back under another name. But, you know, a you can real migrate, shout out to, you can, to our boy. You can migrate my entire channel. I've got, you know, uh, upwards of 300 videos, and uh, I would be happy to. I'm not happy with with YouTube, uh, what you have is the ADL um, plain police. Uh, and look, there are, are people who yeah, hate. They're a people. bunch of they're a bunch of really stiflers. They just want to shut people up. They're creepy. And, yeah, and they the they, were, they were in the Senate the the other day, last year I think it was, and they were saying yeah. 
need to carefully craft a law to, to bypass the First Amendment. Yeah. You know, they were it, there. that was the day they were there with Mr. Pickles from Twitter. I can't remember yeah. the date. The problem is, is that if you call out a priest who has committed pedophile, uh, pedophilia over 40 years, um, you, there's no blowback. If you find a Muslim cleric who has raped children, um, there's no blowback. If you point at a rabbi who's been involved in molesting children, then you're an anti-Semite. And, you know, this is part of the ADL playbook, which is you don't cut down anybody who is Jewish no matter what they do. And so, you know, you didn't see um, David Berkowitz mentioned as Jewish. You, you don't see it with Harvey Weinstein. Um, and it's not just resigned to, to Jews. You know, 98% of, of, of the Jews of the world are peace-loving. They just want to do their work. Uh, I, have lots of Jewish friends. I've, I worked for, and some of my role models and mentors growing up were Jewish. My stepfather, Jewish. Yeah. I mean, I will be right back. I have to go step into the restroom for a moment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Jim, 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 this is something I've always stuff. loved about what you've done is I was somebody who saw the increase in censorship way back in like 2015, 2016. And, you know, originally it was just for stuff that was a little extreme or stuff that could be considered hate speech or whatever. But like uh, yeah. James Q. Patriot just said, you know, Ninja Stunts just got banned from Twitter yesterday. And what was his crime? He got retweeted by Eric Trump. So now it's even if you support the president. We'll take you right <laughs> out. amazing. Jim, you've always been at the forefront with, with, with Acun and now with this Tiger Network to protect, uh, you know, just... Yeah, constitutional speech. And it's not extreme stuff. Sometimes sometimes it's just as simple as having an unpopular opinion, you know, something that's below 51 percent. So exactly. I, I want to thank and, you, Jim. Yeah. Well, yeah do you, and, do you and, realize that the plank number five in the condemnation of QAnon means that we can only argue on agreed upon facts? Can I ask you a question, guys? It's pretty serious. What was Jeff Pasovic? doing in your restroom right now? What? What was Jack Posobiec doing in your bathroom with you right now? That's a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> Remember I hope was nothing, because the... I have no interest in Jack. <laughs> yeah. I Remember met him. Was... I met him. He seemed like a fine, nice man. I had no problem with him. We talked about our families. We sat down and talked maybe half an hour before we did our interview on 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 the OANN stuff. So. Yeah, you were. So when was this interview? Was this um, about a year ago? A year before last. OK, a, I, I, I not can this tell August, you. The August before that. Or maybe it was September. It was maybe. All September. I can tell you is that at one point he was mixed up with Defango and he did some attacks on me when he didn't know me. So. I found that was, um, you know, a little, a little weird. So, uh, you know, I don't have a relationship with him. I don't know the guy. Um, I, I just found it unprofessional of him. Of well, what if he you did. remember, Tom, yeah, as far as that goes, I don't know what. There's good he points thought, to that, but everyone. I think Jack Jared's got it. Thought you were that quantum packets account. Remember, he held up quantum packets thing on his little yeah. uh, in that video he held up his quantum packets twitter account on his on his ipad or whatever that was and said this thomas schroenberger guy he comes up a lot and that wasn't even you i know uh, so i think that's I where that started right and he just well, and, yeah, and the whole it, microchip yeah. thing was fake microchip didn't those, those chat logs aren't real microchip didn't make you and jack Pasovic has just been wrong and wrong and wrong and he's not like a bad yeah, maybe, guy maybe maybe he's vindictive then because yeah. you guys have proved him wrong I didn't even know him when he did the attack. It, it, it's the Gabe Hoffman syndrome. I didn't know Gabe. I didn't know Ella High Priest. So what ends up happening is that, you know, these strangers come and they want to uh, bring their uh, super glue and attach horns to me and, um, you know, Photoshop clothing hosts. You know, this is what happens repeatedly. And it's not just me. We have a problem right now where um, there's, there's a gang stalking pandemic that's bigger than 
uh, coronavirus. And what they do is they're like packs of hyenas. I call it hyena games. And they will sit there and they will belittle and harm a person's reputation. Then they'll start in on the family. And the goal is to see, can we get this person to kill themselves? That was what was happening with Isaac Happy and I prior to his death. They started something called hog belly and they started something called Q Slayers. And, you know, do I think it was directly responsible for Isaac's death? No. I'm going to be very blunt. I think Isaac was murdered. I think Isaac uh, started out throwing accusations at a lot of people, and then he started uh, to intake valuable information that was dangerous if it was exposed, and that's what got him killed. Do you know of any Tom Hanks connection? Because a lot of people brought up that Tom Hanks was somehow involved in Isaac's death. Is there a connection that you know of on that, or is that just internet we don't stuff. we don't know if it's apophenia uh, uh apophenia is you know seen patterns that aren't there however uh there were some pretty interesting <laughs> i think instagram uh posts that tom uh, that tom hanks made afterwards but uh prior to isaac happy i looked at tom hanks as kind of a regular guy who uh, became a superstar through his longevity in the film world. Uh, You know, he had some very good breaks and a very good agent. And um, he's. I just want to make sure we're not marking people incorrectly. One of the things that goes on, I think in the Q community that I want to point out that I really don't like. And, and I've had to fight this because I have a personal friend in Hollywood who I've spoken of before, who contacts me all the time telling me, please get out of that thing. Q is horrible. They're doing these horrible things. Yada, yada, believes all the media on it. And yeah, people are accusing every Hollywood person, every Hollywood person, everybody's ever been there of somehow drinking baby blood and being pedophiles. And the problem yeah. is that this is getting around Hollywood. It is causing a disturbance for them because, no, not every single one of them is involved in this cult. There yeah, is a cult lot. doing these things. But they're not all involved. And uh, this dear friend of mine who I've loved for years, who've been connected to, she's a total left wing to my right. We're, we're completely politically different directions. But her heart's in the right place. And there's a lot of people like that. Her name is Lydia Cornell, if you want to look her up, by the way. She's a sweet lady. And I want to, if, you, if anybody wants to go after Lydia, they're going to have to come through me. Okay, let's just put it that way. That's the guy. That that's the woman who who uh, was on the show with Ted Knight, right? She was on the Ted Knight one? show. You too, uh, interestingly called, considering this election, too close for comfort. Seems to fit. Yeah. Right now. Uh, there's a lot of it mystical things that happen around me, so well, bear with me. And I'm, and you I'm have to say, because because you know I'm I'm in the same boat as you, Thomas. I there's some good points and bad points about the president we have, but. What's happened to him is unconscionable. Total call. And, and he's certainly a great, great president all in all compared to what we have looking forward. To. And what Flynn and Flynn's another one that, that has uh, I greatly support General Flynn. I see him as sort of if I were to say, who do I believe I should take orders from in Q? It would be Flynn other than Q itself, you know. Q yeah, he's going to be on great. in 11 minutes, and I need to go to the to the restroom. Okay, I want to give Jared some time for a second before we end it, because we, we invited Jared here, and he's been really good. Yeah, he's got, and he's been silent. Oh, we Jared, got, like, why don't you tell us minutes? what you got to share? Why don't we open up the floor to Jared? Oh, unmute yourself, because he's muted. And uh, there you go. And we're just going to let you talk about what it is that you are here. What do you want to share with us today about well, this whole you know, situation? I, I mostly came on because uh, you guys asked me to, and I thought that was, you know, very cool. But uh, yeah, kind of like you were saying, you know, I, my perspective on this is as far as if I had to make a list of who the most attacked people are for, I think, no legitimate reason. I mean, you guys are right there on the top. You got Trump, you got Q, you got Jim, you got Thomas. So I've always been really fascinated, you know, knowing you guys and uh, had such great conversations with you and really got to like you all. I mean, a lot. And uh so yeah. I kind of wanted to just come on and explore some of these ideas with you. And, uh, you know, I've been somebody who's 
not followed Q from the beginning, but pretty much since they came to, to HN. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've really just studied it. I've been fascinated by the whole thing and I'm just a big data guy, you know? So, uh, some yeah. of these things that these false accusations and stuff, I can, I can see right through. Um, so it's, it's, it's so, fascinating. Jim, I've got a question for you. Sure. It appears as if there was a effort to make money off of Isaac Cappy after his death and that the, uh, the, the, uh, proponents of this financial scheme included Brett Trimble, Shark Belly Kelly, uh, Corey Daniel. Do you think that uh, Meatball and JB and Microwave or Microchip were <laughs> attempting um, to make this a for profit model by faking the disco- or Discord uh, logs? Do you, do, you, do you think it was purely ego? Like, look at how we trolled the world. Or do you think that behind it, there was a scheme uh, to make money? Well, I, I think from, from JB and Microchip's perspective that they were very influential on, on Twitter during you know the 2020 time, uh, getting Trump elected. Yeah. And they had, they had a lot of what you call clout or whatever. And uh, they had kind of both fallen into irrelevance. And, and Microchip had gotten banned hundreds of times from Twitter, kept making accounts, and eventually just gave up and went to Gab. JB had actually disappeared for like a whole year. I, didn't, I don't think saw him through most of 2017 and part of 2018. So I think for them, they had hatched this idea that we can convince people we started Q and kind of make a comeback. And I think it was that was the troll. We can convince people we started Q. And people used to tell me this. I, w- I was in tons of chat rooms, tons of DMs. And, you know, I would post stuff about Q and people would laugh and they'd be like, you know, microchip is Q, right? And I, no, no, he's not. And then eventually they put forth the whole discord log thing and it became kind of believable. Um, now, when other people came in, uh, they had different motivations. Uh, Defango was somebody who I didn't know in, in, in 2016, 2017. I didn't know him as knowing JB or Micro. And I, I think he had different intentions than, than Microchip did. And, and, and Microchip has disappeared again. Everyone, you know, where, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Well, he ran away with his tail between his legs when he got caught lying, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And what about Defendo, too? I mean, this is a guy who was personally threatened to uh, take away your job and leave you on the street. Isn't that correct? Yeah, he made threats and then said, oh, you know, I was just, you know, Josh and her. And I, I don't know what his intentions were with any of that. But uh, I think maybe with Defango and Lestat, it, it ties more into you and into the Cicada stuff. And, and kind of, I, I really compare how you're in Defango's relationship is with like currently Jim and Hot Wheels relationship where, you know, yeah, Hot Wheels is kind of like there. a disgruntled ex-employee who's just out to get you kind of thing you know what i'm saying and i feel the fan goes the same way like he's just got this chip on his shoulder he's upset he's trying to take you down and you know maybe it's a by any means necessary where you know he'll lie and this i don't i don't know i really don't know i i you know for, for me i'd say there's a big difference i told uh mr brennan that i was going to go on the show and he, he did not try to dissuade me from it as far as uh chavez you know, Defendo, uh, if he knows that anybody is friends with me, he will cut them down or, and he will dox them. With Arturo, it's the same way. So these are people, you know, they call it TS derangement syndrome. These are people who have actively doxed, actively gone after the families of their targets. Um, it's pretty serious stuff. With, um, I do, you know, I don't know the situation with. Uh, Mr. Watkins and Mr. Brennan, um, I can't weigh in on that because uh, I, I don't have the expertise. All I can say is that Mr. Yeah, Brennan has been know. very uh, professional with me. Hey, so, um, you know, I, I, I as, as you have, <laughs> Jim, uh, you know, and James, you've been professional too. What has yeah, happened? I, 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 I don't have any animosity towards you. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, are, are you still in California? No, I'm no longer in California. I'm in Utah, but I was just in California. And it was really interesting because 
people were driving with masks on. They literally had face coverings. And they do that here in as, Oregon too. I've seen that too. I think it's something else. It's like yeah, there they, was one they actually, lady. Who had, they Litter. actually come to fat, buy fast food at Burger King, right? They'll drive through and they'll have their masks on. They'll have their car like 12 feet away. And they'll be like, give me the food. Don't they realize we're in there with the food, making the food, that we touch the food? They don't. They, people aren't it's getting ridiculous. It. It's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. As I've been uh, saying since January, I believe that the coronavirus is a macrophage you have to think of it like a viral prophylactic and that literally what is inside is what counts. And that's usually, um, you know, uh, bacteria. It, it can be germ negative or germ positive. Why did um, uh, the Iranians lose a third of their parliament? It seems to me like uh, it may have been an accidental lab leak. Uh, however, it's being weaponized, and I um, believe that it's going to be re-weaponized this winter, which is what we're entering into. So well, winter is it, coming. It, it, there was a letter uh, that went out that a lot of Q people are aware of from uh, a spiritual man uh, that was just on, like, what, a couple weeks ago or last week, and, and it, uh, it outlined, it mentioned not just corona... Oh. 19 it mentioned corona 21 which was something i had never heard of until i saw that letter and then it made me research more of that it's a movie but can we expect a corona 21 we can and that was a canadian i saw movie. that too i think that we can yeah i think so too i think so too and you have to go back to the so-called spanish flu of 1918 it really wasn't 1918 to 1919. It was a uh, H1 um, a, a avian flu that started with the birds in 1916 and then um, it, it literally got much bigger by the epoch of um, 1918, January to May. It dropped off suddenly. And then the reappearance of it for the second wave, which happened um october 1918 in one year it killed more people than the black death did uh from 1347 to 1352 so uh you know there's a a, a lethality effect um you have to wonder whether they're um making a cyber hermit by stay at home and you know, second wave of financial lockdowns in Italy, in the UK, uh, and in France, uh, you have to wonder um, what comes next because uh, maybe they don't want to. Thinkers. Thomas, it, Jared, I want to. Coronavirus is, is just to put face masks on rioters so that they can affect the 2022 congressional races and take. You know, yeah, that, that's, good, that's a simple. good point. It could also be DNA collection. Um, so, you know, it's it it's pretty crazy. I, I, I look at this and I was calling it out back in January when there was less than 50 fatalities in Luang uh, province. But that is because I've spent my life uh, studying uh, epidemiology and pestilences. And, you know, look, even down to the Black Death, I don't think that that was necessarily a bubonic plague. You would have the bubos, the, the um, lesion eruptions on the skin, um, but it traveled too fast to be um, a regular plague. You know, it was traveling seven miles a day, and you also had pneumonic plague. So, you, you know, it, it, if you have an H1N1, if you have a, a derivation from an avian flu, uh, of course, bacteria is going to join the, the, the party. Look at the respirators. Uh, what did Cuomo do in New York? He went ahead and ordered a bunch of respirators and moved the COVID patients into nursing homes, and you had a, what, 95% fatality rate. So that indicates to me right there that it wasn't uh, your typical virus. It was a virus that attached and hinged itself to bacteria. And so... That's what I think that we're looking at. That's why we've had 
so many mixed messages from the CDC and the WHO and all that. So I have a brother who's an epidemiologist and, you know, uh, he's, you know, a cited author. He's an asshole. I don't want to talk to him, but he's been in nature and in science and, you know, he's, he lectures around the world. Uh, for me, I study uh, more of the macro uh, outbreaks, the things that happened repeatedly in the 16th century and the tie-ins between um, these pestilences and, believe it or not, celestial bodies, comets. Uh, you know, you, you'd be surprised at, um, at how many times a comet has appeared as a pestilence did. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, this could be, you know, uh, uh, viral and bacterial matter from outer space entering our stratosphere. You know, and people used to call me crazy 20 years ago. Now, you know, new scientific data is starting to support uh, my, is you know. There's scientists that are also believing that type of stuff. Uh, um, Gary Hart, uh I believe it's Gary Hart. Yeah, Gary Hart uh, is a mathematician and a yep, and yep. he also helped invent the Exomer laser. He's believing that kind of stuff too. And I mean, they're not stupid people. No, so, and anyway, guys, I, I, I know, uh, but guys, I want to have Jared back, I, I, Thomas back again. Yes, definitely. And, and I want what I wanted to do, Jim. Jim, what I want to do here is I want to give everybody just a couple of minutes to kind of round out the show and and explain why they're here and what they hope people gain from the show today. So I'm going to start with Thomas and I'm going to ask you to, to give a final word. This is the last chance to talk in this show because I know Jim's got some stuff to do. But what do you hope? I can't um, hear you, Jim. What do you hope that people hear or get out of this? Yeah. that the analytic nature of this movement is important, that the push for self-research to be autodidactic in the examination of your uh, circumstances, situational awareness, so on and so forth, that is the beauty of this movement. It's not, um, you know, people and, uh, you know, yelling and, and screaming and, um, you know, waiting for drops, it's um, individual awareness and collective awareness. I think um, that's why I don't hate Q. I, I didn't invent it. Um, I, I've never been on 8chan or 8 Kun, but I think you took a very philosophical approach today, and that is a good thing. All right, Jared, uh, what what do you hope people get out of today's broadcast? What do you think? Because uh, it's been, I mean, for me, it's been very, I, I've gotten a lot of feedback already from people who have been very impressed with this discussion, and I'm thankful for that. Thank you for those of you who are here listening, either now or in the future. And Jared, give us your final word. What, what do you think you'd like people to be left with, with this show? Um, well, hopefully people uh, now realize that neither Thomas or Jim is Q. Um, like I said, they're both very interesting individuals. It was a pleasure to talk to all three of you. And again, uh, going back to what I said earlier about ninja stunts, as more and more censorship happens, which is something I've been saying for years and years and years, people need to be uh, smarter about how they use the internet. Um, and, and it's going to be more and more important that people like uh, Jim are out here making these platforms that allow us to still, you know, have a place to speak. And, and I, I just, I, I think that's a real reality that, you know, back in 2015, people thought, oh, you know, if you say certain hateful things, you know, you'll get banned. And that's not the world we're living in. We're, we're living in a world where all speech that goes against the status quo will, will be challenged or shut down. And it, it's really great to have some smart people uh, who are capable who can, who can really kind of help show people the way. Like I've showed people, hey, when you get suspended from Twitter, this is how you get back on. This is how you make another account. And, and that we're just going to go further and further into that, uh, definitely over the next, you know, five, ten wow. years. So. A lot more cue to come. <laughs> Jim, yeah. my, my, my good friend, my partner in life right now. Uh, what, what do you hope that people get out of the show today? 
Well, I hope they wrote things down and took notes because I got a lot of things to look up. I want to know if this Abby Hoffman is related because he did too many in New York stock exchange dollar bills all over. I mean, he was a clown. <laughs> You know, anyway, but th thank you, Thomas, but he just hung thank up. Thank you, so Thomas, for, for joining back, us today. I'll be calling you later, brother. And and Jared, I'd like to talk to you separately sometime because it seems like you've got a lot to say, too. But Thomas was a real treasure trove. Of he was our notes. focus today. So I think that we all yeah. went into this knowing that. Jim, I, I appreciate so much what you do for all of us here. I want to I'll, I'll kind of close the show. And I want to thank each one of you who popped in and who share this and you, you're free to copy and put it on other venues if you dare. Uh, I think we, we tried to do this without uh, harming anyone per se. We just want you to think of the names that we shared. We just shared. You can go look them up and go research them yourself. Again, this is about you learning, you researching, you taking the time to do this, not allowing other people to define your reality for you, but you've got to define your reality for yourself. I love no you all. I this. care about you all. And I thank you all for being here today. Jim, if you want some final word, you got it, brother. Hey, let's let's pray for peace. You know, let's pray, pray for, for us, Jay. Uh, chief. Let's pray for peace. You pray, let's Jim. Pray I pray always. United you pray this time. America to get through this ordeal that we're going through. That's probably the biggest, biggest uh event that's happened in the 21st century for the United States of America, other than the wars that we've been involved in. But let's pray. Jim, lead us in prayer. Lead us in prayer, please, my brother. This in, in the name of our son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Anyway, let's, amen. let's, let's call it a day. God bless you guys. God bless us, everyone. Thank on. you for coming. Come back soon, Jared. Cool, yeah. And Thomas, thank you. You're cool. All right. We're all good. Love y'all. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye.